Praise the Lord, my sisters and brothers. I'm your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice. And this is the prayer connection where you make a connection with God. Yes, this is now the prayer connection where you make a connection with heaven. Now, this show is designed to build you up, to strengthen you, and to encourage you to go into another level in your prayer life. Yes. It's designed by God to catapult you and to launch you forward into another level in your prayer life. And we know that it's all done by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gets all the praise and he gets all the glory and he gets all the honor. Father God, we give you praise today. We bless you today, Father God. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be thanked. You are worthy to be worshipped. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy to be lifted up. God, you are worthy. Hallelujah. We just take the time to give you the glory, Lord God. We take the time to give you the praise, God. There's no other God likened to you, Lord God. There's no other God likened to Jesus. Jesus. Uh, that's the God we serve, and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. At the name of Jesus, uh, every knee bows. And every tongue confesses uh, that Jesus Christ is Lord today. Jesus, he's Lord today over your situation. He's Lord today over your circumstances. He's Lord today. He's Lord today over that affliction. He's Lord today. He's Lord today over that trial and tribulation. Jesus Christ is Lord today. He's Lord today over your problems, over those perils. He's Lord today. Jesus Christ is Lord today over your afflictions, over your adversities. He's Lord today. He's Lord over your finances, over your health, over your wealth. He's Lord today in your family, in your community. He's Lord today in this world. He's God all by himself. There's no other God like unto Jesus. There's no other God like unto our God. And we bless him. We praise him. And we give him all the glory and all the honor. Have your way today, Lord God. Forgive us of our sins. God, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Purge us. Oh God, wash us. Oh God, cleanse us. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood. It's the blood of Jesus that cleanses a man. It's the blood of Jesus that cleanses a woman. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that cleanses a boy, cleanses a girl. It's the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that same blood that washes and cleanses is the same blood that God said we have authority to plead. We can plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over your family, over your finances, over your wealth, over your health. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over your community, over your house, over your home, over your household, over your people, over your children. I plead the blood of Jesus over your loved ones. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. And you are kept by the power of God. In Jesus' name, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that's risen against you in judgment is already condemned. This is your heritage as the servant of the Lord. Your righteousness is of God. You're, you're living and not dying today. And you declare the works of the Lord. And by Jesus' stripes, you're healed today. The joy of the Lord is your strength today. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding is yours today. Wealth is your portion. Wealth and riches is in your house. And the windows of heaven are open over you. And God himself is pouring out a blessing that you have not room enough to receive. And he's rebuking that devourer for your sake. In Jesus' name. We receive it by faith, Father. We receive your word by faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. We're not waiting to see something. We already got our evidence. Our faith is our evidence. The Bible says faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence. Faith is the evidence. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. So we're not waiting to see something manifest. We already got our evidence because our faith is our evidence. Faith. Some of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. We got our evidence. 
We got our proof today that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. We got proof today that it's already done. Our faith is our evidence. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. We got our evidence. Eh? Our faith is our evidence. Now, speaking of faith, every day that we live, we have to be making a choice. The Bible says, choose you this day when you were served. You're making a choice every day. Every day. A choice between your feelings and your faith. Every day, we make a choice to follow our feelings or follow our faith. To be led by our feelings or to be led by faith. Every day we make a choice to be governed by our feelings or governed by our faith. To be dictated by our feelings or to be dictated by our faith. To be ruled by our feelings or to be ruled by faith. To be led, to be governed, to be dictated, to be dominated, to be controlled by our feelings or by faith. Every day you make a choice. And God wants us to know today, to be encouraged and to be built up at the fact, according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, it says, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight, which means we walk by faith and not by the five senses. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by the five senses. You know what you see. What you hear, what you feel or touch, what you taste, and what you smell. The five says what you see, what you hear, what you can touch or feel, what you smell, and what you taste. We don't walk by our five senses. Not as the Christians, not as born-again Christians. We walk by faith and not by the five senses. We walk by faith and not by the five senses. Now, according to Hebrews 10, 38, Galatians 3, 11, and Romans 1, 17 says, the just shall live by faith. We live by faith. Faith is our fuel to do everything we need. That's what we live out. The just shall live by faith. As a matter of fact, if you're born again, your born again experience started by faith. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 8, it reads, By grace you are saved through faith. By grace you are saved through faith. By grace you are saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. So we see here that by grace we are saved through faith. Now if we are saved through faith in the beginning of our relationship with God. In the beginning of our born again experience, it started by faith. Then the just shall live by faith. Everything we do is by faith. And one portion of scripture in her back at 2 and 4 says, The just shall live by his faith. Not just faith, but his faith. So let me know that I live by my faith. You live by your faith, not your mama's faith. The just shall live by his faith. Not, his, not, not the preacher's faith. The just shall live by his faith. Not the pope's faith. <laughs> The just shall live by his faith, not Bishop Jake's faith. The just shall live by his faith, not by your pastor's faith or your grandmama's faith or the intercessor's faith. The just shall live by his faith. You're, you are living by your own faith. And faith is powerful because a woman that had an issue of blood for, 30, for I think, believe it was for over 38 years, she had... A issue of blood in Mark 5, 38. I believe it was 18 or 34. I can't remember the exact amount of years that she suffered, but she suffered a long time. I know the Bible does say that. It's, she suffered a long time. Read up on it. Mark 5, 34. And when she got healed by Jesus, when she touched the hem of his garment, Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Her faith made her whole. She believed in God. She touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And, and, the, and the virtue of God left his body, went into her body, and she was healed of her plague. She was healed of the issue of blood. Her faith made her whole. 
So everything we do, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by our feelings. We walk by faith and not by our feelings. We walk by faith, not what we feel. Not by what we feel. Now, I might get up one morning and don't feel saved. <laughs> My, I might not feel saved because our salvation is not based on feelings. It's based on what Jesus did on that cross. So I might wake up one day and don't feel saved. So what I'm going to do? Run out and rob a bank? I don't feel saved. Rob a bank? Commit adultery, murder somebody, I don't, I don't feel safe. So no, 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 we don't go out with our feelings. We're not dictated, governed, or controlled by our feelings. We are. We, we conduct ourselves as Christians in righteousness because of what Jesus did on that cross, and we accepted him as our personal Savior, not because of what we feel like. You might not feel like reading your Bible, but you know, man, that I live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You read your Bible not because you feel like it. <laughs> You read it because you know that's what you to, to do. That's what God commands us to read the word. Study to show ourselves approved. Workmen and need not to be ashamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. So I read my word. I pray. Not because I always feel like it. Because I know that's the right thing to do. And the just shall live by his faith. Now, when you begin to do things by faith. That, it don't always mean your feelings are involved. Sometimes your feelings might be involved, sometimes it might not. Because your feelings are always fleeting, which means it's always in flux or it's always changing. Your feelings can change from moment to moment, minute to minute, second to second, hour to hour, day to day. Your feelings are always changing. It's never, they're inconsistent. They, they don't stay the same. So I can't live by something that's always shifting on me. Feelings are fleeting. Feelings are fleeting. Flee feelings are, are always in flux. Always changing. They are always in flux. Your emotions are always in motion. Yes. Now let that sink in. Your feelings are always fleeting. Your feelings are always in flux. Always changing. Your emotions are always in motion. So don't rely on them. Now, if you begin to do something by faith, your feelings will eventually catch up with you. By faith, you know, let's say you go to church and you feel you get there and you're praising God. And it's praise and worship leaders singing. you trying to praise. You don't feel nothing. Matter of fact, you feel really dry. But as I worship and as I praise God, and as I give God the glory that's due unto his name, and as I praise his holy name, and as I give him the glory that's due unto his name, and as I lift up his holy, holy name, and as I glorify that name that's above every name, all of a sudden, hallelujah, my faith kicks in. I feel like praising God. I feel like going on and see what the end going to be. I feel like it now. But at first, I didn't feel like it. I can't just don't praise, don't praise, because I don't feel like it. I praise God by faith, and my feelings would eventually catch up. Somebody say eventually. Somebody say, my feelings will eventually catch up with my faith. It's because your feelings is part of your soulish realm. It's part of your soul. See, you are not your feelings. You are a spirit. You live in a body and you possess a soul. The real you, the real born again you is a spirit. Your born again spirit, that's the real you. Made in the image and likeness of God. The real you is a, is, is a spirit. Made in the image and likeness of God. So you are a spirit. You dwell in a body. And you possess a soul. Your soul comprises of your emotions, your feelings. Your intellect and your thinking, your mind and your intellect and where your personality is developed and your will. So your soul is your feelings, your emotions, your intellect, where your personality is developed and your thought processes, all of that. That's part of your soul. And we're not never told to live by our soul. The Bible says in Habakkuk 2, 2 and 4, the just shall live by his faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith, not by feelings. Not by the soulish realm, where, you, where your feelings are involved and your emotions. We're living by our spirit, the spirit realm. We're not walking in the soulish realm as a Christian. We're walking in the spirit realm. 
are where our born again spirits connected with God. And that's where faith is always involved. Amen. Because remember, your feelings from day to day, second to second, moment to moment, like a roller coaster, go up and down, up and down, up and down. So we can't we never, we don't want to be governed by that. And like I said, if you initiate, start doing something by faith, eventually, eventually your feelings will catch up. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him praise on that one. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. My feelings are going to eventually catch up with my faith. Hallelujah. My emotions will catch up with my faith. I might, what if I'm depressed today? The Bible says, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. See, I praise God because I know that's the right thing to do. I know the Bible tells me to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I might not feel like doing it, but I do it by faith because I know that's the right thing to do. See, everything we do, we are led by the spirit of God because we are sons of God. We govern by the spirit of God. We govern by the Spirit of God. We are led by the Spirit of God. We are dictated by the Spirit of God. We are governed by the Spirit of God, not by our flesh, not by our feelings. And like I said, if you're depressed or something, and the Bible tells us, like, put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, we do it by faith. And as you begin to praise God, like I said earlier, then the heaviness will lift off of you. The Bible says that the heaviness will depart. We initiate it by faith. Praise the Lord. And then the feelings will catch up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's say the Bible says, tells us to love our enemies. And the person really hurted you. An enemy. It hurt, it very hurt you deep to your core. But the Bible says, pray for your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Pray, the Bible says, pray for. So I begin to pray for my enemy, even though I don't feel like it. But the just should live by faith. So I'm doing it by faith. I pray for my enemies. And all of a sudden, the more I pray and pray for my enemy, my heart get changed. My heart, that stony hard heart, that vengeful heart, that malice heart, that, that heart that, that almost hated the person, all of a sudden, because I obeyed God by faith, my feelings changes towards them. And now I actually begin to love them with the God kind of love. Because the judge should live by faith. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to give you two examples of how our feelings are fleeting. Our emotions are always in motion. Our feelings are always in flux or changing. And I'm going to give you a perfect example. So you won't beat yourself up every time you feel one way and you know faith is telling you something else. You feel in one way, feel in some kind of way, and you know that's not what the Bible, that's not faith, that's your feelings. And I'm going to show you by scripture of a man of God that happened to him, Elijah. And let's read that. Hallelujah, Elijah. I'm, I'm going to give you a synopsis of it because we, it's a long chapter. We don't really have time to read it all. So let me tell you about e Prophet Elijah. Prophet Elijah was so powerful. He's one of the most powerful prophets in the Old Testament. And he slew 450 prophets of Baal, the false prophets. He killed them. That's powerful. One man killed 450 false prophets. Then after that, in the name of Jesus, it's, it says that, he even called rain down from heaven and it licked up fire. He called rain down from heaven and it licked up fire. Now, how many people do you know can do that? So he was a powerful man. He was no punk. He wasn't weak. He did great and mighty things. And one portion of scripture says that he prayed um, on the earth realm and um, the rain stopped for three, in a, three, three years and six months. He prayed again and it stopped raining. You tell me how many people do you know can do did can do that or ever did that? So we're not talking about a punk. We're not talking about a weakling. We're talking about somebody that have that power. But let me tell you, right after he killed the 450 prophets of Baal, Jezebel called them out and said, I'm gonna kill you. And this man, this powerful man that just called down fire, uh, fire from heaven, this same God, this same man. 
that killed 40 and 50 prophets of Baal. This same man that shut down the heavens and it rained and spoke again and it started raining. This same man was running for his life. The Bible says he ran to a cave and wished to die. He said, God, just take me. I'm paraphrasing. He said, just take my life. So he went from that power and that zeal and that enthusiasm of doing great exploits for God to running away from away from Jezebel, running to a gay cave, wished his dad about that he was heavy. He was very depressed. Baba, um, if you if you read up on it, it talks about he had extreme depression and sadness. He's on a mountaintop doing great exploits. Next thing you know, he got extreme sadness and depression and wished to die. So we see here, your feelings can shift from any moment, no matter who you are. And even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. We know Jesus was King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He was the Son of, he is, and he was the Son of God. He is the Son of God, and he will yet be the Son of God. But in that garden, the Bible says that he said he was sorrowful. Let's read that. Matthew 26, 38. Matthew 26, 38. Jesus was in the garden and he prayed. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. He told his disciples, my soul is exceedingly, exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. The Amplified Version says, my soul is deeply grieved. Deeply grieved so that I almost am dying of sorrow. Jesus went through grief and sorrow and heaviness and depression in the garden. Because he went through everything that you would ever go through. But look, on the flip side, that was one part day, day of his life. The next thing we know in Hebrews 12 and 2, it says, it says, For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised the shame. One part portion of scripture, he's deeply grieved, sorrowful, even unto death. And then here in Hebrews 12, 2 says, that, says Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. Sorrowful, joy. Jesus didn't live by his feelings. In that guard, he was sorrowful, but he pressed his way anyway, went on to the cross, and then joy came. Joy caught up with his action of faith. One day in the garden, so sorrowful, grieving, almost feeling like he was dying, to the next thing, he's pursuing doing the, the will of the Lord, going to the cross. And the Bible says, the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. We can't go by feelings. Elijah didn't go by his feelings. Jesus didn't go by his feelings. Jesus is our great high priest. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.14, 4, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. For we have not a high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So we see here that Jesus Christ is touched with the feeling of your infirmities. When you're feeling sad, feeling discouraged, feeling hopeless, feeling all these feelings that's contrary to the word of God. It says, Jesus Christ, your, your high priest, your savior, he's easily touched with the feelings of your infirmities. And he just, he just encourages you to do what you know to do that is right. And eventually your feelings will catch up. We are commissioned to walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by faith and not by the five senses. Walk by faith and and not by sight. Not walk by faith and not by our feelings. Walk by faith and not by sight. We walk on by our spirit, in the spirit realm, not in our soul's realm. We, we operate from the spirit, not the soul. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by our feelings. And if we do what we know to do is right, watch and see your feelings will eventually catch up. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, feelings are fleeting. Always changing. Feelings are always in flux. Always changing. Your emotions are always in motion. Mm -hmm. 
And remember, your feelings can do a roller coaster ride from one second to the next. So we don't stand on that. We stand on the word of God. God says his word is heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word won't pass away. We stand on the word of God. We stand on what God has done. He says, I'm God and I change not. So we're standing on unchangeable things, which is the word of God. Jesus Christ, his word. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a sure word. The word is a sure word of prophecy. We stand on the, on the word of God. We stand on, on the word of God that it cannot be moved. We stand on the word of God. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus, God said, I'm God and I change not. He said, my words are spirit and life. He said, my word. And Jesus, in heaven and earth will pass away, but my word won't pass away. So if you stand on his word, you won't be moved either. You'll be like the you'll be like you you'll be like the people of the of the, of the Bible. Say, I shall not be moved. In Jesus' name. Because so you're walking by faith and not by sight, not by feelings, not by what we see, what we hear, what we touch, what we smell, what we feel. We walk in by faith and not by sight. So Father God, we give you praise. We give you glory on this day, God, in the name of Jesus, that we are the people of God that walks by faith and not by sight. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, you are governed by your feelings. Whatever you feel, that's all you know. You don't have a, you, your, your spirit is dead. And when your spirit is made alive through salvation, then you have that choice now. You can, you can yield to your spirit or yield to your feelings. You can yield to the spirit, spiritual part of you or the soulish part. And you make the right choice is to yield to the spirit, yield to your faith. In Jesus' name. But you only could do that if you born, if you are born again Christian. So let me lead you because you've been led by your feelings all your life. And your feelings has got you into trouble. Your feelings are fickle. And if you, if you follow your feelings, you will get in a pickle. <laughs> really, if you follow, if, if you if you follow your feelings because you and your feelings are fickle, your feelings will that's fickle will get you into a pickle. <laughs> So you don't want to do that. You're tired of it. You've been there, done that, got the t-shirt and the bumper sticker. Let me lead you in a simple prayer. Say, say, Father, your word says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm calling upon your name. I believe you died for me, rose again from the dead in Jesus' name. You said, you said if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart, that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. For with my mouth, I confess it. With my heart, I believe it. In Jesus' name. If you pray this simple prayer, you are a child of God. Now your spirit man is made alive. God wants to, he will lead you by your spirit and not your feelings. Get, get into a good church. Get a good Bible. Read it. Pray. Talk to God. And fellowship with other like-minded people that you find in church. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Remember this day, first, second Corinthians 5 and 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by the sense realm. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And give God praise. I'll see you next time on the prayer connection where you make a connection with God.